Hi everyone, it's Henry here. And in this video, I'm going to take you through how I've painted up my most recent kill team, which is based off the Necromundan 8th Regiment, the Spiders. Now, I wanted to achieve a few things with this project, um, namely just to try a few different things out and not use certain paints or certain techniques that I rely upon a lot. You know, I think it's always good to, to freshen up your skills and look at other options, uh, even if you do revert back to what you originally were using. And secondly, Games Workshop have sent us the new Cadian upgrade sprue, and together with my copy of Cadia stands uh, and some bits and bobs I've picked up off Ben, our commissions chief, um, I really fancied having a bit of fun and just making a, a nice sort of bespoke individual kill team, a veteran guardsman kill team. So I've tried to use the upgrade sprue on nearly all the models, um, but I have taken from kits from the guardsman, the command sprue, the heavy weapon sprue, uh, all sorts. And for the paint scheme, I really wanted to look at something properly old school. And you've got this very early piece of artwork of an Imperial Guardsman from the uh, Arcadian Regiment. And I think it was the inspiration for what went on to become the Necromundan Spiders. Um, I couldn't actually find a huge amount of uh, reference material uh, for any of this. There's a recent Necromunda model that they've made. Um, which which references her being uh, in that regiment in the past. Um, and as I say, we've got this Arcadia artwork and we've just got the earlier artwork from um, the boxes of, of very early guards uh, units. So I thought, well, this is a really great opportunity to just have a go at it myself uh, and see what I can come up with. So I hope you enjoy the process. I hope you enjoy the results. Let's paint. So once I'd kitbashed all the models together, got them where I wanted them, uh, I pinned them all onto corks and primed them black. And for the fatigues colour, uh, it's a, a grey. Um, so I'm going to go with, uh, first of all, uh, an all-over coat of Tamiya IJN grey. So it's just a darker grey. I like the slightly blue tone to it because um, there's quite a lot of blue in that Arcadian piece of artwork. And all I'm doing really is spraying this uh, like a zenithal highlight. And if you've heard that term before, it just basically means as if the light source is coming from above. So all the surfaces that are pointing upwards or are facing near the light will be lighter than the surfaces that are facing away. Um, nothing too drastic, but it's a really quick and easy way to get a nice bit of uh, interest and contrast on the model straight away. Uh, and then to highlight it, I've taken a much lighter grey. This is Tamiya Sky Grey, and I'm just going straight over. Now I've actually, this is not quite a 50-50 mix, um, but let's say I, I, I put the Sky Grey in the uh, airbrush and then I put in a drop or two of the IGN grey just to knock it down a touch uh, and then I repeat the process and you end up with this lovely sort of two-tone maybe a few more than two tones of grey um, but very quickly over the model um, and it just gives you a slightly more interesting base coat than if we'd given the model a solid coat of the grey. Now the most time-consuming part uh, of these models easily um, was painting on the camouflage and it's this sort of tiger stripe um, I think it's called. Uh, well, it looks like tiger stripes anyway. And I practiced this a few times on some models uh, before I actually wanted to do it on these. Um, and what I found to be the easiest way to achieve it was to press my brush down firmly, um, which would flare it out a little, which would give me the fatter part of the tiger stripe. And then as I pulled my brush slightly away from the surface, it would become much sharper and I would get the point of the tiger stripe. Um, I tried to make sure they were all going in the same direction depending on what, what piece of clothing they were on um, but I didn't want them all to be in the same direction across the entire model um, because then I think that would look a bit odd. It's already risking looking a bit busy and a bit odd anyway I think um, but I'm really pleased actually with how it came out in the end. Now the paint I've used is called Rock Grey by AK. Um, uh, in hindsight, um, I would have, if I was to do this again, I would use a paint by Vallejo Model Color uh, called Dectam, just because I think the coverage is better with it. Um, then inside the stripes themselves, there's a darker line. Um, and for this, I've used Dark Sea Gray uh, by Vallejo. And it's as simple as filling it in, really. Um, and I went over the edges quite a few times accidentally, um, and I don't think it matters at all. Um, so don't stress, you know, too much uh, with this. Um, I've had the recent uh, the Dawn of Fire series on audiobook while I was painting these up, um, and it's actually just it was really nice. It was really chill, just catching up on the the, the modern 
the new 40k timeline as it were I'm not very uh, familiar with it at all um, and just sort of got in the zone and painted a lot of these stripes but the nice thing is knowing that this is a really impactful part of the scheme right and once it's done nothing else is really complicated everything else is really just coloring in now one of the things that really jumps out uh, to me anyway on those bits of artwork is the yellow and red um i don't know what you'd call the markings regiment markings uniform um unit markings whatever it is i know very little about the imperial guard um so i called up our commission chief ben who knows a lot and i was like look what do these markings mean where can i put them what's the deal with it and he was like it doesn't matter you can put whatever you want wherever you want on the model um, and it's all going to be correct as it were it's all unique um, to different units and I was like great you know seeing as I don't have a specific thing that I'm working from as a reference um, that gave me a little bit of license to do what I wanted so for the yellow uh, I've used two paints the darker one is called English uniform and the lighter one is called Japanese uniform uh, and they're both by Vallejo model color they've got great coverage and they're yellow but they're not like super in your face yellow and this is already a set of colors and a look and everything that isn't necessarily in my wheelhouse you know I'm not that comfortable doing it all um and i think if i'd gone very very bright with the yellow i'd have yeah it, it might have put me off too much um for the red it ended up being very bright actually uh, i used mephiston red i thought it would be a bit more boring than that um, but actually it came out came out pretty full on um so do the cuffs do the other side of the marking on the knee um, and then what i really like in the artwork is this red helmet stripe that they've got so i wanted to paint the red stripe in uh, over the sort of oversprayed shade that I've done rather than over the black which is what the rest of the armor will be um, just because it will cover easier um, and secondly if my stripe is a little bit off a bit too wide a bit wonky it's really easy for me to come in and correct that with the black later on rather than trying to correct it um, with the red over the black now one of the things I wanted to stay away from with this project was my oil washes and enamel washes that I use on nearly everything I paint um, so I'm going to try and use a few acrylic uh, options uh, instead uh, and the first of these is rattling grime which is a contrast paint um, as the name suggests it's this grimy sort of color um, so I've thinned it down a little bit more than you see here in the video I added the same again of water so it's probably 50 50 maybe slightly more water than paint then I'm just going to wash the whole of the uh, uniform with it I tried as I was doing this to make sure that I didn't get lots of the paint pooling on any of the flat surfaces so I try to finish my brush strokes in the creases. So that's where the majority of the paint would be deposited. But the reason I used the contrast paint was I wanted it to slightly stain uh, all of the gray. I basically wanted it to filter. So give a very, very translucent, very see-through uh, gray on top of what we already had, which would just tie things together a little bit um, with the, the camouflage um, and also just give a little bit more uh, interest to the folds in the cloth and all the rest of it. Um, and it, it went okay um, you know I just gave it one coat uh, and then just left it to dry uh, until the next hobby session for the black parts of the armor as I said earlier I really love that blue look that we've got uh, in the the little bit of artwork so I chose to use Corvus black which as you can see has quite a lot of blue to it um, and rather than giving it a nice smooth coat on there I just sort of stippled it and squiggled it on um, and this was just to give it a little bit of texture a little bit of interest um, because you know why not and I'll admit I've fallen into habits um, and this is one of them you know I like to paint lots of scratches and stuff as I paint um, so it wasn't initially deliberate and then I decided to make it deliberate um, on this scheme um, if I'd thought about it a bit more I'd have just done a nice smooth base coat but as I say trying to paint this more accurate defined style um, when I've spent so long not painting like it it's challenging which is really fantastic which is just what I want now I mix a little bit of the rock grey into that corvus black and I sponge that over the black uh, for some weathering before I've done this you'll notice I've applied a couple of decals so I did that at the end of the hobby session after I've done the corvus black I'll link a video up there about applying decals once they were ready to go then I went in and did this sponge chipping stage and where I couldn't get with the sponge I just went in with my paintbrush and added a few more scratches uh, and little dabs of chips and things now, again I didn't want to make the model super grimy like I often do um, so I was going to do this chipping but I'm not going to do a darker chipping color over it I'm just going to leave it like this 
I actually really, really like this um, look. Uh, and this is sort of one of the first things I've jotted down in my book that I might take forwards into other projects. For the leathers on the model, again, off the bit, little bit of artwork we've got, I really loved that lighter leather that they used. Perhaps not quite as light as they did in the art, but I really liked it. And I actually used this recipe on the recent World Eaters video, uh, and a few of you have asked about that. Um, so here it is. Here's the recipe. So I've base coated it in German camo black brown by Vallejo. And on some of the other leather, so things like their backpacks and stuff, I actually use Rhinox hide instead just for a, a bit of variety. Um, but the next step for both this and the Rhinox hide leather was to mix in scale 75 Gobi Brown and apply a first highlight with it. And I would say this highlight covers a good 80% of the previous uh, paintwork. You can see as it goes on sort of how shiny it is. Um, it is very dilute, this mix, so I make sure I touch my brush off uh, on a piece of kitchen paper before I put it on the model so that I don't flood that model uh, with the thin paint. And then a final step, I just use the pure Gobi Brown and I do some edge highlights. So at this point, I was like, oh, do you know what? I'll do edge highlighting on this model because again, it's not something I've done for a long time. Um, I like my sort of tippy-tappy chipping as a, as a cheap way of, of doing edge highlighting, not a cheap way, a different way of doing edge highlighting. Um, and personally, I think good edge highlighting has to be incredibly sharp and I think it takes quite a long time. So can you edge highlight quickly? Mm, I don't know, jury's out. but. I did it on this model, again, to help give me more definition between the parts. Now for the skin, I just wanted something really, really simple, a simple Caucasian skin tone. I'll just fire it across the models where I had the odd bits of skin. Um, so you can see I used uh, Indian Shadow by Scale 75, Night Quest or Flesh, and then I mixed in a little bit of that rock grey uh, to make a lighter colour for the highlight. And that was it. So I've used that rock grey. To, as my highlight color for most of the stuff uh, on the model and this is really for no other reason than it's on my palette so it's quick and simple um, and again this kill team is it's to be played with it's, it's a bit of fun this project right it's so um, I'm not going to you know beat myself up about stuff just use what you got to hand get it nice and quick I noticed the transfers at this point were standing out a bit stark um, so I grabbed some of that rattling grime wash and I just painted over them just to help filter it and sort of blend it back into the armor itself so there's not really much left to do on the model once you've done the leather um, for the weapons I really liked in the artwork how they were all this this metal color this bare sort of steel color uh, so rather than using my go-to metal paints which tend to be Vallejo metal color series uh, or scale 75 metallics I thought I'd use games workshop iron warriors uh, thin this down uh, and applied a base coat of it then I thought I'd have a go with uh, a bit of a hobby classic that people are always going on about this 50 50 mix of agrax earthshade and nuln oil uh, as a wash uh, this was tough because one of the, my favorite things with painting miniatures is i love oil washes and enamel washes over metallics i just really like the look um, i have never really used acrylics much uh, acrylic washes for this so i had a go um, i wanted it to have oh, oh how unprofessional phone's gone off how embarrassing that's Ben as well probably talking about Imperial Guard um, I wanted it to look nice and uh, steady the, the 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 sort of um, the wash so it faded it really stained it brown um, it didn't pull so I applied three coats of it waiting for it to dry in between so you can see on the left that's the one coat model on the right it's got three coats on it so much more definition but I like it because it doesn't just look like I've slapped the wash all over it which is something I, I really didn't want um, that look of. I chose wherever possible uh, a lot of the heads which had these the sunglasses on, the visors on, because I think that's a very uh, old hammer look, as it were, to the Imperial Guard. Um, and a really good hobby friend of mine, Trev, he loves his old guard. Um, so it just sort of made me smile when I was painting these. I was thinking of, thinking of him. He's, he collects these old guard models that just look like not a huge amount of detail on them, put it put it that way, but a lot of nostalgia, a lot of fun. Um, and I really like the little nods to those in some of the uh, some of the modern kits. Um, so I've base coated them with uh, Vallejo Deep Sky, which is a very, very translucent deep blue. And then I've highlighted them with Techless Blue by Games Workshop. What I wanted to show you here was if you do your highlight line and it's way too thick, don't stress about it. 
it's really easy if you do it too thick to go back in with your darker color and thin that highlight line right down. So if you struggle, if you've got a slightly shaky hand or you're just nervous about doing it, do that lighter color, don't stress, and then block it out with the darker color to get it as sharp as you want it to be. Um, it's, it's really, really effective. It's really easy to do. And a lot of painters do it um, and don't necessarily say that. Um, you know, it's not always a super sharp line straight away. Uh, and then it was a case of just neatening up the rims of the goggles as well. Um, as this project went on, I was more and more hammering into my head, be neat, be neat, um, be accurate. And that's one of the biggest take homes from it. Um, I actually, I've, I've really enjoyed um forcing myself to be a little bit more accurate um, little white reflection dots in the corner um, just a you know this is a very simplified version of, of doing lenses and stuff but it looks fab you know from three foot spot on and again when you mess those up don't stress just blob a black and then have another go now for the sergeant i thought i'd do the necromundan spider motif now, obviously there isn't a transfer that I'm aware of that I can use. So I stuck a red skull decal on there to give me a starting point um, and then I decided to just freehand in the spider legs uh, themselves. Just using the Mephiston blue, thinned it down, put it on a nice small brush, touch the brush off on the paper so it's not washing off the brush easily um, and then just slowly paint it in. Um, I'm not a master of freehand by any means. I love using decals. I'm not very good at freehand um, but actually it wasn't that hard at all. Um, just took my time. Uh, shame it's not perfectly in focus, but I think you can see what I'm getting at with it. Um, and I probably applied it four or five times in the end to get them. And then I did a little bit of chipping with the black um, and it just looked fab. Um, it looked like it was meant to be there on the armor. I think because it was so small and because it was a simple design and because I chipped over the top of it, all of that helped to simplify the process uh, and, and sell the effect. Uh, you know, if it was an enormous great Richard Gray style skull and rose on a, you know, 20 foot shield on a knight or whatever, you have to be a lot better, <laughs> clearly, uh, like Rich's. Um, but for something like this, just have a go. I think it looks fab. Um, once it was all dry and chipped, I did uh, went in with a rattling grime again and just gave it a very, very quick filter uh, over the top. Again, just to blend it in um, to, to, to the rest of the armour. But that was the little nod, I guess, to it being the, the Spiders Regiment. Um, and that's them done uh, at this point. They all obviously have slightly a few individual details, um, but you know they were all painted very, very simply. Um, now, I hate the finish that the, the GW washes give you, the acrylic washes give you. Absolutely hate it. Um, so what I've done at this stage is gone in with an ultra matte varnish all over. Now, I don't tend to matte varnish over my metallics because I think it sort of kills the point of the metallics um, but I needed to knock some of that shine uh, off the wash um, and actually I, I quite like the effect it's given um, so here are the, the here is the kill team rather my veteran guardsman kill team uh, as I said I used a lot of different kits on this so if there's any of them that you think oh that's cool how have you made that just ask in the comments and I'll list off um, the bits I made um, the only real conversion work was on the sniper uh, where I lengthened the barrel using a piece of brass rod um, just so it looked more like a long las uh, and the scope on top of it's from a, a, an intercessor bolt rifle. Um, again, because I, I was talking to Ben, I was like, how big can the scope be? He's like, oh, you can put massive scopes on them when it's time. It would be fine. Uh, so I was really happy with that. Um, and then the blood bag that the medic is carrying, um, that was cut off at the wrist um, and added to her arm that comes with that model normally um, just so it hung down correctly and the rest are all just kit bashes there's no more conversion I think off the top of my head uh, in the rest of it so yeah a, a, a ton of fun I guard players I get it now I've only ever painted one guard model other than this and that was that one I did a few months ago um, I totally get it they're amazing um, how on earth you do any other hobby once you start painting imperial guard I'll never know because the character and the getting lost in the project is something I've missed for years now, if I'm honest. Um, just that real escapism and an enjoyment um, with the just pure sort of hobby fun. Um, so actually, yeah, really, really fun, really, really pleased. And in my little painting notebook that I always keep, 
um, I have jotted down a few things. You know, what did I learn from this project? You know, do I love the result? No, not at all. I quite like it. It looks cool, um, and it's going to be great fun to play with. Uh, bases, incidentally, are just the Necromunda bases that I've done in another video, which I'll link up to the top. Um, but there's a whole video on making them. Um, I the two big things for me that I learned from this were. Uh, accuracy and definition I've become lazy I think with my accuracy in my painting so that's something I'm going to try and focus on moving forwards um, for a while anyway until you know I fancy trying out a different style um, and the definition definition is something that is a permanent bugbear for me I never feel I can get the sharpness and definition that I want into my models um, and I learned a really big thing um, on these models and I'm going to talk about it a lot more in a video sort of dedicated specifically to that um, because it's it's legitimately changed it's, it's like one of those level up moments for me with my painting these models aren't a level up for me but that specific technique that application is a level up for me and it's something I think I will do in every model going forwards now um, because I've just yeah I've really enjoyed the result of it so there you are bit of a rambly one a little bit self-indulgent bit more than one model but I hope you've enjoyed it um, I don't often get to do a full unit or whatever for these videos, but but here they are. If you've got any questions about any of it, then pop them down in the comments. I'll get back to you. Massive thank you to all of you that support us over on Patreon. Let us do these projects here and those extra videos for you over on Patreon. So if you fancy supporting us, go and check it out. I'll be back very soon uh, with the next painting video. So hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you next time. If you've liked any of the models in this video and you fancy having an army of them yourself, but perhaps you don't have the time or wherewithal to get it done, consider dropping us an email at commissions at cultofpaint.com and maybe Ben can sort you out.